Welcome back to the channel. I have some more thoughts in my mind that I just want to share with you guys. Hope this is helpful to you. This is this is going to relate back to Hex and Hedron and Akosa a little bit. Obviously, I've been posting a ton about those projects, but but a part of this video is just going to be some of my story and some of the approaches and beliefs that I have that I believe have attributed to a net worth of millions of dollars. And I want to share these with you guys. Here is a quote from Warren Buffett. Honesty is a very expensive gift. Don't expect it from cheap people. Honesty is one of the things that I want to try to give to you guys. I can't know that everything I'm saying is, saying is actually true, but at least I can be authentic and real saying what I actually think and share that with you guys from a perspective of someone that has a net worth higher than some people. And I want to share what I've learned with you guys and try to make some of these concepts as simple as I think they really are. And I want to talk about some of that with you today. So here's a quote from Alex Hormozy. I've talked about him before. If you're not subscribed to his Twitter and gaining wealth and having a high net worth is important to you, I would really suggest it. I mean, most of his suites are just, he does, he just does such a simple, a good job of breaking down complex ideas into simple, you know, one liners almost like this, but this is do it enough times that it would be unreasonable for you to suck. And I think that he's right. And I think that as I've said it before, wealth isn't at least it hasn't been for me and I don't observe it that and I observe it the same for other wealthy people it's not this complex process it is small little steps that compound and grow on each other and you just do something enough times that of course it results in wealth and thinking about it using the what like the idea of this tweet I think is an example of how someone should approach gaining wealth, what are the simple things that you can do that of course are going to result in you being wealthy? And I want to tell you guys some of my story shortly and how I think they're really simple steps that resulted in where I'm at today. And I hope to keep these principles in my mind and to be a lot farther in years time, years time from now. And uh, let's read another tweet. So you already know what to do. This is another thing. We're, you know, it's easy to look for all these simple, clever, you know, difficult examples of, oh, just do this one clever thing and then you'll be a millionaire. And there are simple things, but you probably already know them and just start doing them. And, and one thing that I want to work on too is I want to, to make, I want to make wealth believable to you. I want to have, I want to help with this particular video hopefully make the idea of having a net worth of millions of dollars more believable to you. I know you won't take action. I believe you won't take action on something that you can't believe would ever happen. And I, I, I hope to, in a sense, talk down myself a little bit, not make myself look like someone special, because the truth is I don't think who I am is someone special. Maybe the beliefs are special, but I'm not. I didn't do anything that clever to get here. And I don't think it's going to be something extremely clever that's going to get me to the next level. And I want to share that with you. So here's another one. Success is hard because it requires consistency, not complexity. I totally see that in my life. Here's another one. This is from Naval Ravikant. <coughs> Everybody wants to get rich immediately, but the world is an efficient place. Immediate doesn't work. You have to put in the time. Do you have to put in you have to put in the hours? And so I think you have to put yourself in the position with the specific knowledge, with accountability, with leverage, with the authentic skill set you have to be the best in the world at what you do. You have to enjoy it, keep doing it, keep doing it, and keep doing it. Don't keep track and don't keep count because if you do, you'll run out of time. The most common bad advice I hear is you're too young. Most of history was built on young people. They just got credit when they were older. The only way to truly learn something is by doing it. Just listen to guidance, but don't wait. 
And I think that's so true. One of my regrets in my life is I didn't start soon enough. I was 28 years old when I started this, this different worldview of what does it take to gain wealth and started actually taking action towards that end. And to me, that's pretty late. And, uh, it did accumulate relatively quickly, very slowly at first, but it, it, it went faster than I expected. And I do want to emphasize, I am not there yet. I have not, I'm still very much looking ahead to, to something bigger and better later. But where I, where I started to where I am today, I didn't believe, I wouldn't have believed at the time that it would have accumulated as fast as it did. And these, these tweets and, and these quotes from, from, uh, Alex from Rosie's not a billionaire yet. I think he's very well on his track to be, and Naval is a billionaire, but these quotes from these people really resonate as truth. Here's another one from Alex. Some people blame their circumstances for lack of success. Others decide it'll be a part of the success story they tell. Decide what you are. That is so real for me. There was a number of times in my life that I was like, when I'm wealthy, it's going to be so cool to tell this story of what I did to get here. And now I get to share some of this story with you guys. And that, that tweet just, it resonated with me a little bit. So this, these are pictures of my first rental property that I bought up until this time in my life. I was working in IT at a university and I had an okay income, but I was spending all my money on cars, guns, and computers for the most part, and really didn't have a savings and was just, as soon as I get a pay raise or something, I was automatically spending it on a better car, more guns, a better computer, whatever the thing is. And I knew that I was so willing to just die in a sense for wealth. Like I, I will do what it takes, but I had no idea what it was. And in a sense, I guess this video is for people like me. That's like, if I just knew what to do, I would do it. And these are lessons that I've learned and, uh, take them for what they're worth. But, um, but this is me, at least from where I'm at today, reaching back out and saying, Hey, this is what I've learned. But anyway, so I sold I sold my motorcycle. Motorcycles were another thing I was spending money on. Sold a motorcycle, sold some guns, sold a car to save up enough money to buy this house. And and I think it's really interesting because one of the things that triggered me into deciding to buy a, a property was I had a friend that got his master's, got married, moved into a duplex, and I had a lot of respect for his approach to life. And I knew he was a relatively conservative person. And I was like, how did he do that? In my mind, in order to be, in order to purchase a property, you had to have 20% down. And I was like, well, a $300,000 property, that's 60 grand. It's going to take me forever to save up 60 grand, not even worth it. And that's what I was thinking. But I was like, oh, wait, this guy did it. Maybe I can do it too. And sort of realizing, wait, I actually can make this happen. And I was like, what do I have to lose? Because I was single and I was playing, which I think was really healthy playing the downside. What if I got sued? What if I don't know anything about writing leases or how to fix a house? What if, you know, what if I can't keep up and what if I can't handle it? And, uh, I was like, well, I'm single. So the only person that'll be hurt is me. At least I don't have a family that's depending on this to go well. So the downside to me seemed pretty small. And I was like, I'm, I'm really willing to, to make this happen. And a couple months later, I bought this property. And it was a triplex, so I moved moved into the middle unit, which was empty, rented that unit out with friends, and then I had the other two units bringing in income, was just working on the property. It needed painting and another uh, some other things. So after I, I'd go to work, come home, work for a couple hours on the property every day, and was just, just doing the simple stuff, right? And uh, it was working, and... Uh, read some, some simple books, got a lease, had people on that. It was great. I ended up moving out of one of the bedrooms in the triplex into the garage so I could rent all three bedrooms in my unit out. And, uh, that's one of those things that remind me of Alex Hermosi's tweet 
Some people blame their circumstances for lack of success. Others decide it'll be part of the success story. And it's like, I, I look back at moving into the garage in order to rent out the other rooms as a cool story. I didn't tell anyone that I was doing that. Obviously, the people in my, my friends knew that I was doing that. And I loved it. There was just a part of it. It's like, I'm, I'm willing to do this. Who, who gives a care that I'm in the garage? I don't. I know it's not necessarily like I wouldn't want my coworkers necessarily to know, but I was kind of proud of it. And then two years later, I bought another house. This was a single family house, a five bedroom, two and a half bath house. And uh, it's like 2,400 square feet. Moved in, rented out all the rooms, lived downstairs. And there's a downstairs living room. Put my bed against the wall just on the floor. Had my lifting squat rack down there and my desk. That's all I needed. And a couple, like a pretty short time later, I bought two more small properties, bought a mobile home. And... And so I was just, it was starting to accumulate the ability the just a little bit of extra income that I had was enabling me to do more, which enabled me to do more even faster. And another really cool story that, that, that has meaning for me is along the way I got married and my wife's family, at least compared to the family that I grew up in was relatively wealthy. They had a, they have a, a very pretty beautiful house for example, and they just, they, they had a lot more money than, than my family. And my wife moved into this, what we're looking at right here. We bought a mobile home for 3,500 bucks, put about 10 grand into it, drywalled it, did a bunch of stuff to it. It's tiny. It's like 500 square feet, maybe not even. And it was in a mobile home park that was not a glorified mobile home park. It was a, a pretty not nice mobile home park. She moved in with me because we knew that if we moved into our perfectly fine houses, we had three single family houses at the time, any of them we could have moved into. We knew that our ability to continue to level up would be, would be slowed by doing that. And I'm so thankful to have someone that had enough of a mindset to follow me into this mobile home. And the crazy thing is we both look at that, look to that beginning as a positive time. It's fond memories. It's another one of those things that just reminds me of Alex's tweet. It's like part of the story. This is what we did. And yeah, if you look back at some of my old YouTube videos, people are commenting here, I'm giving rental advice outside of a mobile home. And yeah, some of those videos I was living in that mobile home and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I had, you know, over a million dollars worth of real estate at the time and I was still living in a mobile home. And, uh, but it's like, was that clever? Was that this unbelievable step? No, it was, it was a very simple step. It's like, well, what simple thing can I do that helps me move ahead? And the truth is a lot of people aren't willing to do that. It's fine for them. They can make their own choices but I was willing to make those sacrifices and it really did help. And there's another quote here. Sometimes it's not how fast you row your boat. It's how fast the stream is going. And I do think as this quote from Warren Buffett is saying, it is worth paying attention to, you know, if you're, if you're in a, uh, if your goal is to build wealth. You can choose what your occupation is. You can choose, if you're going to school, what's your degree? Is it going to get you money? You can choose these things. And I, and I was thinking at the time, and I was really getting sold on this idea of cryptocurrency. And I, there was a point that I, I really stopped investing. I kept investing in my current real estate portfolio, but most of the new money that I was going to, would have invested in a new property went into crypto because I was like, basically, this is the fast stream as I see it. And so I started buying it. One of those that I ended up buying was Hex. I got in on Hex on the very first day, bought way down here over on the side. And that's where the great majority of my Hex is. And I mean, this is up from, from this little peak right here that we're up 16,000%. And at the time I didn't put much money in. And at the time it felt like a lot of money. 
But looking back, it was really pathetically small. It's like, I still can't quite understand why I thought that was a lot of money. But, uh, but it was what it was. And I was really trying to find, it's very intentional. I'm playing crypto because I think it's the fast stream. I think there's a potential here and I just can't buy another property, especially because real estate had gone up so, so much since I first got my real estate, I was a little bit more reluctant to, to buy the top of real estate. And I was like, well, there's great opportunity here. And so I bought in and buying in the hex and telling people, you know, a significant portion, a meaningful portion of my crypto real estate is hex is almost another one of those like, well, you got it on the first day, of course, you're wealthy. And that's exactly right. You could look at it as a negative, like, oh, you're not that clever. You just got into hex on the first day. You were lucky. Well, I don't think it was luck. And because there was intention in choosing this game. There's a reason I was paying attention, trying to find good new projects to, to be a part of, because I knew that there was a possibility of great run-ups. I did not expect hex to go as high as it did, but at least I was playing the game and I was putting money in early and on a project and we'll see what the upside is. And, and so, like I said, I think those people that, oh, you're just, you got early on a hex. That's not special. You're right. It's not special. Copy it. If it's that simple, then do it yourself and realize that I could have sold at this first peak, at this peak, at this peak, at this peak. And I held because I felt that the truth was the potential future was going to be relatively optimistic. I, I didn't know where the top was. I didn't want to sell too early. I'd rather hold through another dip than, than be out of the game or something like that. And I did take funds off the table and to be truth, truthful, I should have taken more off and I'm still learning. Um, I'm trying to continually evaluate what I'm doing and is there a better way that I should have done it, learn lessons as I'm going. So I only become better over time, but but with what I knew at the time, I really regret very little. And uh, I'm so thankful for the money I did take off the table, by the way. But, uh, but here we are, and there's just some of my story. And I want you guys to, to take it for what it's worth. And, uh, and just be careful making things too complex. Choose good games to play. Look at them as straightforward and simply as possible. You know, for me right now, the thesis is still crypto seems like a, a good game to be playing <clears throat> if, and the basic assumption is eventually in the future at some time, we're going to have a bull run. I want to have taken advantage of the hard times before that good time happens so that I have a lot to show for it when price rises. And as long as you get in good projects that are a part of that bull run, and as long as there is a bull run, you're going to be fine, right? So there is assumptions in this thing. There's a belief that you got to hold on to through the hard times, but it's not complex. And, uh, and I would be focusing on if it was me, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to do, but from what I've learned, I'd be focusing on building yourself up, paying attention, basically making yourself the person that is ready when the opportunity comes saving money, you pay yourself first, even before you pay your bills, put some money aside so that when you see a great opportunity, you can act on it. You got to be the person you need to be before the opportunity comes. You can't, if you haven't saved, you can't take advantage of that, that amazing opportunity. Even if you find it, you don't know when they come, you got to be ready before. So, so get ready. It's what I would say, pay attention to these people that have been successful and start taking little steps. Now, I think you're going to find if you're like me at all, that it's a very meaningful way to live. Knowing that you're building, at least trying to build a better future for yourself, you have things to look forward to. And it makes times like it adds meaning to these times, like a bear market where price is down. Because you can see that yes, there's a lot of pain here, but that pain is potential, the price is down. And that implies that, you know, if we have a bull run, it's only going to be up that much more. And if you're taking advantage of the pain, it's opportunity. And these are comfort and some thoughts that I've had and, and really just what's on my mind. And this is all a reminder to myself as well. And I, I take some meaning in trying to share 
these lessons that I feel like I've learned or I am learning with other people. Like I said, I was one of those people that I would do what it takes. I didn't know what to do. And, and I think I might have fallen into this, this complexity trap. It's really not that, that, that crazy. There's a few simple things. Just hold to them. Get those right. And you're going to be so much better off than otherwise. Anyway, guys, this is what I had for you. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Have a great day.